Hi folks, Nathan here from the ebook reader blog. So for this video, I'm going to give you guys a detailed review of the Onyx Books Note. So this is the first 10.3 inch e-reader from Onyx. Uh, it's very lightweight thanks to the flexible screen. It doesn't have any glass like a typical e-reader that does make it a lot lighter. Uh, it doesn't have a front light, uh, but it's got some nice upgraded hardware with a quad core processor and it runs newer Android 6.0. Uh, so the screen isn't flush. It's kind of got like a slight roughness to this bezel's edge right here. I'm surprised it's not more rounded, but it's not a big deal. So uh, the device is very thin. You've got this uh, home button on the bottom or a back button. If you hold it, it goes to home. And then you've got the USB-C on the bottom. And then on the back, we've got two speakers here, but for some reason, only one of the speakers works on mine. The left one does not work and it's uh, the right one's very quiet. So you got the power button on top. Um, very lightweight. I mean, it, just for the big as it is, uh, it's very comfortable to hold, even just like one-handed. Uh, here it is just uh, next to the Kindle Paperwhite to give you an idea of the size difference. Uh, so the thing is, like, if you have a Kindle Paperwhite and a leather cover like I do right here, it's actually heavier than this device is, so that's pretty surprising how light it is. Um, so, like, the Paperwhite has a front light. The Onyx does not, but if you have good lighting, I mean, it's not going to be a big deal, but you do need some ambient lighting. So, like, here's the look at the latest 2018 iPad next to it. So, as you can see, the LCD screens with the glass... A lot more reflective so you still get like the bright spot in the middle of this but you can kind of tilt away from it whereas if you're outside trying to read like on a tablet very difficult to do so uh, let's go ahead and talk about the software some like i said it runs android 6.0 you can install apps it's even got like the recent apps list you can jump back to so i'm going to clean this up so that it runs a little bit faster i notice it does get a little bogged down sometimes but uh, it's definitely faster than the previous onyx devices performance is definitely increased but you know it's still not going to be like a tablet you got to realize the limitations with ink. So let's go ahead and load up an ebook. This is with the default app. You can load in different apps, like I said. So the default app, it supports EPUB, PDF. It supports a bunch of formats. So uh, it's nice having this large screen if you want to use large font sizes. It's also great for PDFs. I already uploaded a separate video for PDFs, so I'm not going to talk about them much here. You can check that out on the ebook reader YouTube channel. So uh, let's talk about some of the on-screen or some of the uh, reading features here. You tap on the screen. You got the contrast adjustment tool. This works with uh, PDFs as well. It works really well with PDFs because they often have that faded text. But ebooks, you can also get your font to be darker. You can also load in your own fonts in here. Uh, I had a guide on my uh, website showing you how to do that. That's kind of a they explain it a little bit in the manual but it's not very clear so uh, you got the different fonts it's got the Chinese font menu and you've got the English font menu uh, and then you've also got you know the uh, usual line spacing adjustment options on the textile tab you know the usual stuff you can also change the indentation and like the uh, paragraph spacing so that's something a little different that you don't always have uh, so yeah you got quite a bit of control over your layout in here uh, if you want to have large margins small margins and of course you got the usual, you know, on-screen stuff here. If you hold down on a word, you get the uh, dictionary pop-up. It uses a uh, star dick, so you can load different dictionaries and translation dictionaries into here. You can do the highlighting, copying, uh, you can tie text notes to this. Like I showed in the PDF review, you've got a separate page that shows all this, and then you can export them as text. Got the bookmarks in the top right corner. Um, has text-to-speech. So the problem is the speaker just isn't very good. So the spec text to speech doesn't sound good, but it does have Bluetooth. You can use Bluetooth headphones and Bluetooth speakers. So uh, you got the usual highlighting features. So you can use the stylus or your fingers. So it supports both touchscreen types. Uh, with ebooks here, you cannot write on the actual ebook with the stylus, but with PDFs, you can write on the screen or write on the page. Uh, but you do have the side note feature with ebooks. You have that as well uh, with other formats. So you got the notepad next to your ebook. You got the different types of pens, the different uh, options with the uh, thickness, and it's got the uh, pressure sensitivity. So if you write lighter it's lighter pen stroke if you push down harder you get the darker pen stroke so i'll show the uh writing the note feature a little bit more uh here let's go ahead and cover the rest of the ebook features first uh so you've also got just like the landscape mode as you can see here if you just wanted to use regular landscape mode it's got the orientation switch it doesn't do it automatically uh but you got the uh 
you can customize how often you want the page to refresh and then the slideshow feature what it does is it will automatically turn the pages you can set it here how far you want it to go you can set the interval how long it'll take to turn the page uh, it'll go up to 60 seconds here so you got the auto page turns that's not something you have on uh, other e-readers so you got the multi-page view so you got nine pages you got four pages you can scan through your book quickly this way so that does work well too um, you can enter a specific page if you tap on here okay so with PDFs you can write directly on the screen using the stylus if you wanted to uh, make notes or you know underline stuff and then the stylus it has an eraser on the end so that's something that the other devices don't offer so if you're writing you can just use a the uh, eraser on the end to get rid of your line it will go with the last or like one stroke so if you use just one stroke it'll go with the whole thing um, so then you've also got like some different shapes so I show this a lot more in the full PDF review I'm not going to go into detail with here I'm just going to give you a brief look so you got the different you know the size with your pens and you got the different uh, shapes so the same thing applies when you're using this note app so this is the note app with the stylus it uses a Wacom touchscreen so you've got you, it's got really good res response with the stylus uh, there's minimal delay uh, it does feel pretty good writing on the screen and it does go to the edge here quite well but uh, I have a little bit of problem sometimes with the stylus not working with menu items like in the very top corner uh, it's, you better just use your finger the style the capacitive touchscreen does work really well uh, better than other onyx touchscreens so I had the onyx n96 and like when you were using the stylus it would just like put out these jagged lines randomly occasionally but it, you don't get that problem at all uh, with this Wacom touchscreen it's got good responsiveness it does feel quite natural but uh, it has kind of a slick feel to it the screen does it's a little bit like of a slick layer on top so it doesn't really feel like writing on paper uh, but the response is good uh, but like with the uh, other devices you get a little bit more of a paper feel like the remarkable and the Sony just from the texture of their pen so this pen it doesn't wear down on the tip it's got a hard plastic tip uh, you're probably going to want to use a screen protector to make sure you don't scratch the screen there have been a few reports of that but I have not had any scratches at all yet so uh, let's show some of these other apps that you can load in. I loaded in the OverDrive app. I tried the Libby app and it wouldn't work. It wouldn't let me put in my library card number. So I tried the OverDrive app and it does work. Um, the only thing it does is kind of weird refresh with the pages if you can get used to that. And then it's not bad. So here's a look at the Google Play Books app. It also works pretty well. I just kind of wish they had a like a bolder font options because this is as bold as it gets. I would like it to be a little bit bolder. The Kindle app, uh, it's bolder with it. But uh, I showed a video with the Kindle app, so I'm not going to show it on this one. Kindle app does work surprisingly well, better than other Android devices I've tested. So uh, the uh, Google Play Books app is definitely usable too. So here, let me show you something that's kind of weird with the uh, page turn. So if you enable A2 mode, it can go, you can get really nice and smooth transitions with this device. So it doesn't do the full refresh. It just sort of stays in partial refresh mode. And then it has these uh, animated page turns in the Google Play Books app or the Google Books app here, and it's kind of different because usually you don't get that with ink, and it actually works pretty well, though you do get some after images, so you're probably not going to want to use A2 mode much, but it definitely does make things smoother. So uh, here it is when you're not using A2 mode, you get the uh, flashing, like when you're scrolling through the pages there. Uh, and then with the uh, Playbooks app, I mean, you can go in and adjust the font sizes, and all that stuff seems to work well. So I mean, the app is quite usable. I just kind of wish they had a bolder font. So this is the boldest font option. Um, a little bit like these ones, uh, a little bit lighter. But yeah, the app is totally usable. Uh, so here is a quick test of the web browser. Sorry, the uh, camera kind of slipped down a little here, but you get the point. So this is the default web browser that it comes with. And it ha it's been optimized for ink. As you can see, it does automatically enters the partial refresh mode when you're scrolling. Uh, so that actually works pretty well, but you got to wait a second here for it to fully refresh to engage. Uh, and then it has this full screen option right here, so you get rid of the tab at the top, which you can't see since it's cut off. But the full screen option does work well. It fills the full screen with text. Um, and then you've also got these little arrows you can see that will turn the pages. I'll show you in a second once we get to a page for that. Um, so, I mean, the web browsing experience on Ink is never great, but it's surprisingly decent on this. If you're just use, reading text-based websites, you can use this arrow to scroll up and down. It'll go the full page, so you don't have to use the scrolling motion. You can load up images, of course. So, it'll even play videos, kind of, if you're using, like, A2 mode. Um, but, obviously, I don't know why anybody would want to watch videos on Ink. But, I mean, it is possible. Uh, they aren't too bad, actually. But... Um, Okay, let's go ahead and show you Bluetooth keyboard. So people were wondering if you can use keyboard on this. So yeah, it supports Bluetooth and it works quite well actually. If you enter A2 mode, you don't get any flashing like with the cursor. 
So yeah, with the Android 6.0 operating system, it opens it up to all kinds of possibilities, and you got the Google Play Store in here to install apps. So I mean, it's kind of hit or miss how the apps are going to work with Ink Android E-Reader, but I mean, it, some of them do work quite well. As you can see here, just mashing the keyboard, it even keeps up. There really is like no noticeable delay that it's going to keep you uh, distracted or anything like that when you're typing. So a lot of different things you can do with this type of device. I've really had a lot of fun reviewing it. Um, check out the ebookreader.com for the full review. Also, the YouTube channel, like I said, I posted a Kindle review and a PDF review. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video right here. It's getting pretty long. Leave a comment if you'd like to see a review of something else. Thank you, guys. Bye.